It's an exciting week, ladies and gentlemen. We just released our first documentary film. It's a seven-minute film on Gabe Dean and his return to the sport. Check it out now on the Wrestling Changed My Life YouTube channel or click on the link in the show notes. Enjoy it, folks. Let's get to the interview. You know, you'll see a kid put it all out there and then, you know, very often it doesn't pan out and you're kind of watching him go through this painful experience. And I remember just watching this kid and I had to get back out on the mat to go coach somebody else. And I started getting really emotional myself and I, I, you know, I started tearing up and crying and I needed to find a way to be tough again because I had to get out there and go coach somebody else. And, you know, it's a roller coaster ride of another guy, another guy. And, um, and I remember just putting my teeth together and saying, you know, you know, and the kid's name was Cole. I said, Cole, you know, I don't know what everything's all about, but I can tell you this, you've earned the right. We have earned the right to feel this crap. We can endure anything and adapt and pivot and change. Wrestling gave us that ability. I would say nothing in life has impacted me more than the things wrestling has taught me in terms of self-reflection, resilience. Toughness. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Adversity, 100%. How to pick myself up and be a man after I failed. And everything that has shaped my life and where I'm at today would not be there without the values and basically the the lessons I've learned through the sport of wrestling. For me, wrestling saved my life because it, it allowed me to focus and channel my energy. We're fortunate if you wrestled because if you wrestled, natural talent helps, but it's, it's 5% of the ingredient. It pales in comparison to heart and technique and effort. It humbled me, taught me humility. Nothing can hit, humble you more than wrestling. I think it's the learning to adapt, right? You learn, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to solve problems. You know, if I look back at my time, I spent wrestling. If it gave me one thing more than anything else, it's mental toughness. You're listening to the Wrestling Changed My Life podcast presented by Spartan Combat. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. This is your host, Ryan Warner. My guest today is another dynasty builder. We had Rob Cole on on Monday. Today we have Mike Palazzo. Coach Palazzo, he's created a dynasty at Lake Highland Prep High School down in Florida. He took over there in 2008, and since that time, they've won seven state titles, crowned two Ironman champions. Coach Palazzo was named Coach of the Year in 2016 by Flo, and maybe best of all, he's an Illinois guy. He was Glenn Bardnor's first state champion back in the 80s. And man, this is a great conversation. I hope you enjoy it. I'm actually joined in this podcast by Joe DeSena. He's the CEO of Spartan Races and uh, the Obstacle Course Racing Company. And he is just going crazy into wrestling lately. He created a brand called Spartan Combat. They're the sponsor of the show. They also sponsor the Cornell Regional Training Center. And they have some awesome merchandise on their website, SpartanCombat.com. Check it out. So Joe and I take this interview with Mike Palazzo. Before we get to the show, fan of the week time, it's Gunnar Woodburn. That's at Coach Woodrow on the gram. He wrestled for Wyoming. He's a coach at Jenks. I don't know if that's the name of a school or some kind of Oklahoma wrestling slang I'm not hip to. And obviously, folks, his father was on the podcast on Monday, but Gunner is just a rabid fan, and we greatly appreciate the support. Now that's it. Let's get to the interview with Mike Palazzo. Peace! Okay, we have Coach Palazzo, leader of the Lake Highland Prep Dynasty. We're going to get to that, but let's go back to the early stages for you. You're a product of Illinois, wrestled under one of the great programs in Illinois history, Glenbard North. Tell me about the impact of Coach Han on uh, on your wrestling and who you are today. Oh man, uh, uh, like it. Coach Han is um, uh, is an amazing human being, and I think that uh, obviously his track record says a lot. You know, it's not just me. I, I don't think people always get it. I run into people all the time when they talk about Glenbard North, and sometimes the kid doesn't doesn't necessarily know. Maybe he's a wrestler at Glenbard North, or whatever, and they'll they'll they, they'll say, "Oh, you wrestled there, yeah." I, I did. And, um, 
at the time, the gold dot and all the things that, that came out, I, you know, me, my brothers and um, that whole group were kind of the ringleaders of that whole process. And uh, it's so neat to see what, what it's become. And um, <laughs> I throw it, I throw it out. I had a kid not too long ago. I was in Wisconsin and um, he was a Glumber North wrestler there. And um, I say, hey, you wrestle at Glumber North? He said, yeah, I, I wrestle at Glumber North. So you, you know what the gold dot is? He said, yeah, yeah, I do. But I can't tell you. I said, I already know what it, what it is, you know. And um, we just got into talking and I, I reminded him that I was the very first, uh, one of the very first guys to put that gold dot on that barn top, which was, I don't know. Now I think back, it's 30 something years ago. Um, and it still sits there today. And it's just an amazing process. And Coach Han did so much for so many of us. I will tell you that I would not be a coach um, if it wasn't for him. Um, there's no doubt about it. And I think that what happened to me was, was weird because I was not in, involved with wrestling. I lived in Orlando, Florida for a while. I was constantly getting um, pulled on by some people to come help in wrestling because they knew I wrestled in college. They knew I was a, I was a decent high school wrestler. But um, reality was I had no interest in doing any of it. But periodically, I would still talk to Coach Hahn. And uh, he used to always give me the same speech. You know, when am I going to start giving back? And, um, you know, I thought I was doing good in life. I was running around. I, I health club business and things. And I was, I was young and, and free. And I, I felt like I was doing really well. But he used to just hammer me with this, this question regularly. Until one day I ran into a guy who I would run into all the time. He was constantly trying to get me to come help Lake Highland Prep. And I just hung up the phone with Coach on. And he gave me one of those rundowns about you really should start giving back and doing some things. And I, this guy like saw him two minutes later and I really couldn't tell him no, the, the coach had gotten fired or, or got let go at the time. This is 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was like, all right, I'll do it. I, I, I don't know. I think I was going golfing. And instead I was like, all right, let me go wrap my brain around how I'm going to be a wrestling coach now. And since then it's been great. And honestly, when you talk about like changing your life and, I would say that growing up a wrestler, yeah, I, I, you know, a lot of things happen to me, but as a coach, more so than anything else has really changed my life. I mean, it's, it's definitely made me a better human being. And I definitely enjoy life a lot more than I did prior um, to being a coach. And it, it's, it's hard. It's not an easy job, but I think that overall, um, you know, guys like Mark Hahn change lives and um, you, you could see it every day. I mean, the, the list of guys that he's, uh, that he's had go through that program since me has been awesome. <laughs> I was his very first state champion. So if you got to go back in time, like I don't even know how many he had since then, but, but the oh. numbers, you know, through the roof and forget about state champions. Look what these guys did after that. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, amazing. You look at Tony Ramos, Austin Gomez, Joe Gomez, I mean, Danny Monaco, all these guys. So I, I was in high school in 07 is when I graduated. Glenbard North was the power and they were scary. Like you had Providence, they were the, the Catholic power and then Glenbard North was the public school power. Um, and so you, you have this great background of wrestling. You graduate Indiana in 94. And as you said, you're not in the sport at all. And a lot of people don't realize how time intensive it is to coach. And so when you agreed to coach at Lake Highland prep, were you saying, all right, this is going to be the next Blair Academy or you thought you were just going to do it for a year? No, honestly, I, when I decided to do it, I kind of sat down on myself and said, well, there's no sense in doing it halfway. I really don't have, it's really not my DNA. So if I was going to start doing something, I got to, I got to do it. And um, right away, I mean, day one, I told a, a group of people, a small group of people are going to be one of the best teams in the country. And ultimately we're going to be the best team in the country. And I, I've stuck to it for 13 years. I've, I've kept plugging away and that's the ultimate goal. I, I honestly, I see wrestling sort of like being in a weight room. It's weird, but somebody told me a long time ago, you, you know, you never run out of, uh, out of weights, right? You get strong, but then there's always like another five pound plate laying around. Right. And just, they keep adding up. And, and the reality is if you set some really, really, you know, extreme goals, like we're going to be the best team in the country. Um, nothing ever changes. It's just is what it is. It's a process. You keep working extremely hard at it. Um, you put a hundred percent into it. And I think lives change. One of the biggest things that I've realized over time is 
you know, we've won some things and we've broken some records and I'm, I'm proud of what they've always, what they've done, but we're surely not there yet. But I would tell you that in the end, um, and I've been saying this a lot, but uh, look, every kid who goes through the sport of wrestling actually earns something. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they may not get a name on the wall or they may not get a D one scholarship. They may not be a nationally ranked wrestler, but our sport needs that humility. Um, and it needs to continue to, to, to have that thing. We all want to talk about the best wrestlers we've had or the most exciting moments that we've had. And we've had some really good ones. Um, and, and, and those are, those are great milestones for any program or any individual. But I think the better stories are, are the ones that people may not even know. Um, that kid who went through this program, he did all the work. He did everything that everybody else did. He really did never get a name on the wall, but I can tell you that his life completely changed from this process. We've been doing the same workouts or the same regimen since I started. Obviously it's gotten tweaked and we try to get better and better at, but I, I would say that the workload itself and the commitment to being a part of this program has been no different for the last 13 years. Um, we didn't just decide that, well, we're going to ramp up the goal. So then we'll start doing more. Honestly, we have every hour accounted for, um, that I can think of. And now the idea is to become more efficient and all those other things and get better at what we do, but the level of commitment to it is all the same. So I would tell people, you know, I get a big sign going up in the Academy, but it basically says in the end, everybody gets paid the same. And I think that people really need to understand that. It's not until somebody becomes an adult, goes through this process the right way, uh, where they can really look back and say, man, now I know why I did all the things that I did. Um, and, and that we try to keep that here all the time. It's really important when you build a program that um, you don't alienate anybody. Um, you know, we, we've, we're, we're doing well and I'm happy. And I think we, we have every bit of the goal to be the best team in the country. But the reality is, is that Along the way, we need to make sure that everybody who had a hand in this in this program for any period of time understood that it was life changing in general. And, um, and when we do that, then you build legacies. And this program will be along around a lot longer than I will ever be. And and that was part of, part of my next goal is that yeah, we want to be the number one team in the country. But what can I do here that will keep this program? And when I say the program, I really mean wrestling in general because wrestling in general is probably um, in this area has grown exponentially because we've, we've thought to work in the, work in that manner. It's not always all about ourselves. We run an academy that helps anybody. And I think that it's really important that everybody gets something out of it. So, and that's a coach Han thing. Well, think now, honestly, about all the, uh, you know, all those kids who maybe didn't, you know, aren't the Joey Silva's of your team. Yeah. You're creating future high school wrestling coaches because they've learned from you how to do it right. And so you're creating, spawning all of these kids who are going to go out and coach high school wrestling programs and hopefully raise the level of Florida wrestling. Um, but kind of going back to what you said earlier, when you started, you wanted to be the best team in the country. For folks who don't know, Florida is not traditionally considered a power state, although you have the Russ Cozarts of the world and there's some awesome kids coming out of there. But Lake Highland Prep was a 1A school. You guys had like a small wrestling room, and I heard at one point your first year, there was down to like three kids on the team. So what was the first thing you did to change the culture? True. I mean, I, you know, honestly, I think that we, we did. I think there was like 25 kids that called themselves wrestlers at one point or another. And quickly it dwindled down to three or four. And I think <laughs> that, that the reality was, is that, you know, you, you had a plan. You said, well, listen, wrestling can't be treated like this. The sport's way too hard. I remember telling kids, a small group of kids and parents, um, trying to give them a history lesson on wrestling in general and talking about St. Ed's of Ohio mm. and, and how, how great the program is and, and how many years of tradition. And when I was in school, how a kid would come to my, you know, come to Indiana university and it was a St. Ed's kid and you know, how people looked at that guy, you know, because, uh, because of what they've gone through in high school and the amount of tradition and how hard they work and what their schedules are like. And I didn't really think that in the, in the, in the, and surely in the Lake Island world, but even in the entire state that people wrap their brain around the idea of the different levels of our sport, what good really meant. And um, so I right away started, you know, it, presenting that case to everyone. And even when we won our very first state championship and I was real proud of the kids, 
I remember um, distinctly telling the boys that that night, and again, it was a big deal to win because we did it in a very short period of time. And, yeah. um, and people were like, I, you know, how did they, you know, how did that happen? Um, but uh, I remember telling the boys that night, Hey, listen, that's great. I'm super proud of you. I mean, I, I even cried. So I, I was excited that, that they had worked so hard and that it was a milestone. Like, look, we can actually get this thing rolling. This is actually works. Um, but I did remind them that guys, um, remember we talked about sin ads and things like that. Well, you're all the way down here and they're still all the way up here. Right. And, and that's just where, it, how it is. And we got to get back to work. We need to back to practice. Our goal is, is surely not met. And, um, you know, I, I want you to realize where you're really at in the world of wrestling. And I remember the next day taking heat from parents where they were saying, I can't believe you said that to the kids. You know, um, that was a big moment for them. And you kind of just, you know, made that not feel so good. <laughs> and I remember my, my answer to it was, no, I was being honest. And I think it's really important for the kids to hear that because, they're going to be a part of something a lot bigger than this today. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I kind of knew it and I kind of felt it like, you know, and, and, and again, a lot of this is, you know, I, I would have to say some luck involved too. I mean, obviously you always can put a plan in place and you work really, really hard to achieve all those goals, but um, there's still no guarantee that you're going to have a, a, you know, be able to get all the grease in the wheels and have a program like this down the road, but, but we, we've done it, you know, we've, we've done real well and, but we're surely not there yet. So I'm still saying the same thing to this group of guys that we're training right now, you know, that we are not the best team in the country and we need to work really, really hard as a program, um, as every individual that goes through it. Um, it's my job to, to sail this ship properly and allow this thing to grow exponentially um, and put a footprint in the world of wrestling forever. Um, so I can, you know, one day, you know, if I did decide to, to not be a coach and I can't really see myself not being, but um, that everything would be put in place to keep this program where, where it is. Um, so that's part of my goal too. Well, and you just mentioned that was a message you told your team after they won. Yeah. Um, I've also heard you say that, you know, you get a kid who loses and say the Ironman finals or the Super 32 finals, that one of the things you say to them is you've earned the right to feel this bad what does that mean to you yeah. and kind of how did that come to your come to your you know when it goes back to i had a kid a long time ago and um you know look he wasn't a, a superstar by no means he worked really really hard and he's kind of like one of those stories of wrestling you kind of watch a kid he's got no athletic ability whatsoever um he just accepted the commitment level and he kept working and working and our sport's amazing that it rewards people in that way mm -hmm. um, and he's able to have a, a level of success and things didn't turn out for him the way that, um, that he, that he wanted at the end. And I remember him sitting there and just, just, uh, you know, crying his eyes out and every one of these bigger events, so whether it just was a state turn in the past or now, a, a you know, a super 32 or, a, or a, any one of the bigger things that we, that we attend, you know, you'll see a kid put it all out there. And then, you know, very often it doesn't pan out and you're kind of watching him go through this painful experience. And I remember just watching this kid and I had to get back out on the mat to go coach somebody else. And I started getting really emotional myself. And I, I you know, I started tearing up and crying and I needed to find a way to be tough again, because I had to get out there and go coach somebody else. And, you know, it's a roller coaster ride of another guy, another guy. And, um, and I remember just put my teeth together and saying, you know, you know, and the kid's name was Cole. I said, Cole, you know, I don't know what everything's all about, but I can tell you this, you've earned the right. We have earned the right to feel this crap. And in, in this world, I think that, you know, now going back, I say it a lot and I, I, I came up with it then, but I think it's so true to life in general, um, unless you're, can, you know, truly committed to something. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you'll, we'll see somebody complain or cry or, or be upset, but we would have to kind of, you know, nod our head and think, why are you so upset? You know, I don't know. I, I don't see it being that invested in it. Right. When you truly know that your commitment level is through the roof, that you really have rearranged your life in, in so many different ways and you put it all out there on, on the line. Um, when you fall short, 
you know, I think it means something. It builds character. And even though it's, it's a hurtful experience, I think those are the paydays. And it sounds weird, but when I say you, you're going to get paid the rest of your life, yeah, you get paid the rest of your life. You get, you, you went through experiences that um, quite frankly, will prepare you for the rest of your life and uh, make you who you are today. So um, even though somebody's sitting there in a tunnel, crying their eyes out and they feel this unbelievable amount of pain, I think there's great value in it. Well, and they listen to you because you've been there and I don't mean to drudge up bad feelings, but I got to imagine your junior year at IHSA State, the sophomore year you lost to Bormat, he lost to Ben Morris. And for people who don't know these names, just know that they're you know legends in Illinois. So mm -hmm. you lost to a uh, you know, good guy and he lost to a good guy. Your junior year, you come back first round, you lose. And then that guy loses. I got to imagine that's one of the lowest points <laughs> of your life it was um it was unbelievable it was How probably, horrible it was horrible i mean i i, I first of all i i never really I, I think that year i was wrestling really good and i probably would have been you know i, I should have been the guy or, or or for surely one of the guys no no doubt about it i'd beaten so many of them um and you know look i for whatever reason it didn't pan out i just remember sitting that entire weekend all the way up in the very top of that place and just looking down on it and, and, you know, millions of things run through your head about, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing. I, I think I was a kid who was really dedicated and I really put a lot of effort and time and I, I was super committed. Um, so there's a lot of things racing my head. I, I think some of those experiences definitely um, help you in the world of coaching. I was one of those guys who dealt with a lot of roller coaster stuff, even through college, you know, being injured or whatever it might be. Um, I always used to question, um, you know, like any kid, I probably did a lot of questioning of why I do this. Mm -hmm. I remember coach Han telling me very often I would have those regular breakdowns, like any, any high school kid, but, <laughs> um, but I, I would, I would, I, I thought I was smart about how I would approach it. And I would bring that, the, bring the, um, the question, you know, nobody cares about wrestling. You know, <laughs> I would say that very often, you know, nobody cares about that. I'm doing all this stuff, whether I'm cutting weight or, you know, missing this or that in my life. And, um, I would bring this up very often and coach Han always had the best answer. And he would, he would pipe you down immediately and he'd say, that's right. Nobody does care. And, um, and the only person you're supposed to care is yourself. You know, the only thing you're supposed to be doing this for is what you see in a mirror. And one day, Mike, you'll understand that, right? He used to tell me one day you'll figure it out um, because it is really about humility and it is about doing it for no, nobody else but yourself. Um, and it's really about who you're going to become and how you deal with these things. And when you're a kid, you don't really understand it. Um, but I think as you get a little bit older, you, you, you can if you allow yourself to. It's one of the things that I get scared about in the world of wrestling right now is um, social media is different. You know, like we, we didn't get very much attention back then, you know, you'd be super committed guy and you had to wrestle. And then the, a lot of those questions would be being asked in your, in your mind and, and you never got any validation to them, right? You have one phone in the kitchen that would ring, you know, once in a while from aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, by the time it got down the line, it had nothing to do with wrestling. Right. And now, every two seconds, somebody's getting some level of, you know, connection to our sport. I think it's good in growth and it's good in communication, but maybe not so good in humility. Mm. Um, right now, I'm watching posts that would say, you know, I'm proud of Johnny today. He went out and ran this morning, you know, that I, I had to remind 2000 people that I did that. I don't know what's humble about that. Um, I think it would be better to walk into Johnny's bedroom and say, Hey, Johnny, I'm proud of you today, you know, and, and leave it at that. Um, I think that we're sometimes guys are starting to live in a little bit of like, uh, um, and households too, wrestling households are living in a little snow globe and they're getting a lot of attention, but maybe that directs us to do this stuff for the wrong reasons. And, I, you know, and I think again, getting our, getting the word out and, and growing wrestling is really important, but, um, you know, not with the lack of humility, you know, and I think that, again, the, the biggest lessons that anybody's going to get or the biggest takeaways is that our sport is really hard. It bets people. It really is a betting process. Yeah. And um, allow those things to make it the reason why your kid's going through this process. So that would, that's what I would say.
I love it. And I have a follow-up before we do. Joe, I know you got a split in six. Do you want to ask anything to Coach Palazzo here before you jump? First off, um, Coach Palazzo and I met at a tournament, and um, I didn't know everything I just learned. So I'm glad. I'm, I actually was just enjoying listening. And um, everything you mentioned about changing lives, about it being a vetting process, about your goal being a stretch goal to be the number one team in the country, I thought you already were the number one. At least in my eyes, you're the number one team in the country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, not, not, not yet. <laughs> it, it's exactly um, who and what we are at Spartan. So I guess that's why I'm attracted to your sport because um, they're so similar, right? It's a lot, a lot of hard work. It's a lot of failure. Um, there's only a few people standing at the end. It requires tremendous commitment. So, um, and it changes lives. I mean, look, it's like, I, I tell people all the time, it's like turning iron into steel. You got to heat it. You got to pound it. You got to drown it. And, and that's what we do for, you know, one and a half million civilians a year around the world. Um, you guys do it in that room. Your kiln, your the heating process you guys provide is probably a little hotter <laughs> than what we do out on the course. But um, but same same deal, you know. Sorry, sorry, I'm not spitting out questions. I'm just thinking. Um, I was speaking to Mike Moyer, and he said there's a ton of D1 um, recruiting coaches that are saying to him, "Hey, I want to see not only the good wrestlers, but the good wrestlers that do Spartan or Tough Mudder." Because, because that's a person that's exactly what we're looking for. And, I, and I've spent a lot of time with the military, special forces that have said, uh, we want wrestlers, right? And then UFC tells me wrestlers make the best foundation of any fighter. So I'm, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just sitting here as a fly on the wall and jealous that um, I was mixing cement in high school and you guys were doing what you were doing. But I'm, I'm super impressed. And you're number one to me. Yeah. Well, I would tell you that if I, thinking about those those races and going into like the general population, it's something that's so needed because the reality is, is that people don't have this thing in their lives or a thing that they can tackle that would help vet them. And remember, you know, that's why I talk about the humility of our sport. Wrestling is great when you do it because this is what you want to do. This is the, the, the you love to compete. You love to put it on the line. You love to live a different lifestyle. I think something like that offers that whole process, um, Spartan races and, and these things. It, it offers that whole process to everyone. Um, they, they have an opportunity to go out there and put something on their plate that helps put them in a different mindset in life. And, um, and it's really needed now in the world. I mean, just in general, if you really think about it, one of the most important, most powerful things about our sport right now is that it's unlike a whole lot of other sports. It's still really, really hard to do. And one of those races is really, really hard to do. And that's why it has value. And, I, and I'm attracted to hard, um, challenging things because I think, and you agree, that's what transforms us, right? Like, like as a culture, we use, many cultures used to have a rite of passage to become a man or a woman in that culture. That's gone. Yeah. So unless you're a wrestler <laughs> or you happen to do, you know, a bunch of race, like you don't get that opportunity. And, what I find, I don't know if you agree with this or not, is, is those people tend to um, flip out or get upset over silly things in life because their expectations are really high. But when you've been knocked on your ass a bunch of times, when, you, when you've gone through your, your vetting process, your sport, um, or done a bunch of, of races maybe, um, I don't know, you have a little more gratitude towards um, where you are in life as, as opposed to being upset you're not somewhere else. I think it's, uh, I think you're hitting it right on the head there. Yes, um, go ahead. I was just going to say the cool thing about the Spartan races is a lot of people don't realize until after they get to their twenties, maybe they listen to a couple podcasts and they realize, man, I wish I would have wrestled and I want that grit. I want the, you know, the, the drive that comes with that, but you can't wrestle as an adult. You can't go learn wrestling like you can Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And the rea reality is that, Brazilian jiu-jitsu training just isn't as rigorous as wrestling. But those Spartan races, which is what I love about them, and a lot of people I know who do them love, is that this is a chance for adults to train for something, put it on the line, and then, you know, like there's always more weights in the room, there's another level to do. You did the sprint, do the beast. You did the beast, do the, do the ultra. And you can always keep going with it. And so it gives someone a whole new purpose and passion to stay fit and to forge themselves. 
That's true. I, I would tell you when you're talking about like the college athletes and you, you know, you talk about some D1 coaches who maybe are looking for a Mike Moore, Moyer talking about looking for like that, that other side of the athlete. Um, I would, I would definitely tell you that any guy who's a, a, a high school kid, a college wrestler or a college wannabe who's venturing out to do things like this too, it says a lot about your brain and where you're at in life, right? Um, that you'd step out of your comfort zone to go compete and do something that is not wrestling, but it's really, really hard, right? And um, to put themselves in environments like that probably does say a lot about that guy's character or where he's at in his mindset um, and how tough he probably really is or wants to be. You know, I think that there, there's no doubt that um, guys who want to jump into things like that and want to swim in the cold water it says something about them for sure. We're bringing you, we're bringing you to Sparta, Greece in November, if you can. I don't know how it lines up with, you know, wrestling schedule, but uh, maybe we should get some Lakeland prep kids and, and you to come out to the world championship in Sparta where this all happened. We're, we're probably really? the first wrestling event took place ever, right? <laughs> we, we it's true. Go. Yeah, it's true. I'm pretty sure that's the case. I think if you went to history, I think that that's what you find out. Yeah. And what's awesome about Sparta is um, the ruins, the race goes literally through the ruins. It's, it's, it's incredible. So I got to get, I got to get you guys out there and Ryan, you could, cool. you could run like a media uh, platform from the ruins. Uh, that would be thousand years ago. We should bring Lake Highland prep and have them dual Blair Academy and then have all the wrestlers do the race. Right. Uh, uh, right. In Sparta. That would be just incredible. If November works, I will organize it in the original amphitheater, the ancient amphitheater. We could wow. we could throw some sand down, and you guys could battle it out, and we could we could raise the hand of of you know the winner. Fantastic. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna get fit. I gotta. I'm gonna have to run one of these races now. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make that my new goal here. You're busting out of your shirt. You look fine. Yeah. Well, you know, you gotta like test it out and see what you can do. I'm sure that it's a lot harder than um, just saying I'm going to go do it. <laughs> so you have to get ready for it. I did the one in Tahoe, the 15 miler was my first one. By far the worst part at the top of whatever mountain it is, you have to swim like 200 yards, freezing cold water, the winds whipping 45 miles an hour. You get out and you're still only halfway done with this race. You're freezing. You got to you got to carry a bucket up the half pipe from the Winter Olympics. It was freaking nuts, but I, uh, it was awesome, man. If you haven't done one, Coach, I, you'd eat it up. I do not like cold water, but <laughs> I may, I may deal with it <laughs> if I had to. There you that go. Which doesn't kill us. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's neat. That's neat stuff. Yeah, I, I would tell you that there's a huge tie into the sport, our sport, and that, and the races. And uh, the mentality in, in general, there's no doubt about it. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, and I'll tell you, our sport needs a little bit more of that um, where there's not perfect circumstances. We got a lot of wrestlers right now that uh, I think everybody would agree that there's a lot of maneuvering. I'm looking for the perfect circumstances for that perfect match. Um, you know, and I'll pull my guy out of this, but I'll put him back into this and I'll, uh, I'll make sure that uh, the stars are perfectly aligned so I can win the match. So I can climb up the rankings. And I think things like this, where you just say it's on, you know, it is a lot different. I think a lot of coaches are looking for that mentality. It's, it's a mentality that we're working on constantly to try to get guys to want to just shake a hand and, and, and get in a fight without thinking about where, what, when, what you're going to get, what you're not going to get, who it is, whether it's going to help me in the rankings or not help me in the rankings it has nothing to do with it. You know, it's just the mentality that says I'm an ultimate competitive son of a bitch. And I like to do it, you know, and I think we're fighting constantly and things like this really bring that out because people are attracted to stuff like that. They're not necessarily thinking about winning and losing. They're thinking about doing, and it's a big difference. I, I mean, you and I are so aligned. Um, and Ryan, that's perfect timing to give a little plug. Um, I, one of our best athletes in our sport is a guy named Hunter McIntyre. And one of the best guys in your sport is a guy named Andy Rovat, who came out of St. Ed's, right? If I, if I have that correctly. Yep. And, and um, Hunter, the athlete on the obstacle racing side, who's a bit, you know, a bit bravado. He calls himself the sheriff. He's got a, he's got a, um, a sheriff's badge tattooed on his chest. He's, 
He's a bigger badass, you know, larger than life kind of guy. Anyway, he says, I want to I wanna wrestle that bald guy. What's his name? Andy. I was like, the guy went to the Olympics. He goes, I, I know a lot of Olympians that are lazy. I want to wrestle that guy. I'm going to kick his, I'm going to pin him. <laughs> So anyway, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan is organizing having Hunter and Andy wrestle next week. And um, and Andy, I, Ryan, I just texted you. Andy sent a uh, picture on text that said there's a new sheriff in town. But to your point, to your point, Mike, like like neither of them, neither of those guys flinched. Andy didn't flinch. Hunter didn't flinch. Like they're both yeah. warriors and like it, it, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Right, let's do it. And then I was going to say, maybe for the back of your shirts at your high school, the ancient Spartans used to say, like, we don't ask how many the enemy is. We don't ask, you know, who the enemy is. We just want to know where the enemy is. And that's yeah. like the, the mentality you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. No, I think that that's good. But we, we, we've always run, you know, one of the, the keys to us doing well has always been, you know, blessed to have worked side of it to have resources to be able to do it I, I understand that that's a real important part of running a program but ultimately we've had a really tough schedule the last six seven eight years we've been everywhere and um and, and you know accepting that and just showing up and wrestling a guy like joe silva wrestled so many different places and wrestled so many nationally ranked guys in his last two years that it was inevitable that you know if you looked at the resume, the only reason why that happened is because, quite frankly, we were everywhere. And if you were going to do well, you know, you know, you, there's there's no way that you can't. You're either going to sink or you're going to swim, you know. And I think that I still have that mentality. We'll put together the toughest schedules we possibly can and put these guys to the ringer. Um, and I think it's a mentality. It's good. It, it's a good thing. And I won't let that um, thing swoop into the program that tells me hey why don't you take your foot off the gas pedal because it would be a lot better for um my guy to get higher up the rankings if we didn't wrestle this week but we wrestle next week and we and we pick this time and that time and don't wrestle now because there's nobody that can help him get higher um and if he loses then it's a detriment right and i think a lot of those things start to happen and uh you know I, i'm conscious of it i don't want it to happen i want to just compete and make sure the guys are prepared and rested and ready to go. But um, reality is they should want to compete. And that's, that's a constant what we're working on. Yeah, you guys have a vicious schedule. I know we're going to wind down, but um, for folks who don't know, Lake Highland Prep wrestles the Ironman. I mean, even out of the season, Super 32, the TOC, you guys are freaking everywhere. And yeah, you're really kind of embodying what Joe said there. You just throw the guys to the fire and, you know, at the end, whoever's standing – goes on and wrestles at the college level. And even the guys who don't, you know, know what it takes and have those lessons instilled deep down in their fiber and take that with them into business, into teaching, into whatever it is. And so I think, Coach, you're just exemplifying what everyone in wrestling wants to see out of a program. Um, it's been an honor to talk to you. That's all I have. Joe, do you want to wind down with anything? Super honored to talk and to listen and to just confirm um, my insanity at wanting to align with wrestling and, and my internal team is part and saying, I don't understand, Joe, what are we doing? I'm saying, you, you don't understand these guys are, and gals are exactly what we're looking for. So you just confirmed everything. Yeah. Well, it's look, it's life changing. And I think that uh, our sport needs more of the story being told about the process, a little bit less about, um, you know, who's on top today or tomorrow. Uh, that's going to change, you know, today, hero, tomorrow, zero. But I, I think that the process itself, the vetting process of a human being, of, of a young man or woman now going through this stuff, if done with the right mindset, um, changes lives forever and it builds great foundations. And, um, you know, it, it's no different than putting anything else on your plate. And you, what you created does exactly that for everyone. Um, they just need to jump in, jump in and, and, and do it and accept the process. So, yeah, all good, guys. Ryan, I agree. Ryan, before we leave, you got to uh, reach out to um, his nemesis, that team, and set it up, Blair, right? And set it up in Sparta. They're one I don't of the know who it is. I mean, look, there's there's a few other guys out there. It could be it could be one of I don't know five or six programs right now. I, I, I you know Wyoming Sem is just off the charts right now, and they're the number one team in the country, and nobody would argue that. 
Um, we'll see what happens in the next years to come here. We'll, we'll be pushing real hard to be, uh, to have our foot in that door for sure. Well, guys are awesome. Thanks well, for doing uh, it. We'll make it happen. Coach Palazzo, thanks for coming on the show. We'll get this out to you and we'll let you know when it's live, my friend. Awesome, guys. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. That's it for this episode of Wrestling Changed My Life. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. As always, thank you to our sponsor, Spartan Combat. They're hosting a national tournament in Jacksonville, Florida, May 20th through the 23rd. You can register now at SpartanCombat.com. To watch the video interview of this episode, go to Wrestling Changed My Life on YouTube. You can also see the clips on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling Changed My Life. That's it, folks. We'll see you next time.